water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no
is our resolution, our answer to the call. We will love our wives and children. We refuse to let them fall. We will reignite the passion that we bury deep inside. May the watchers become warriors. don't pass the torch to the next generation, everything that we've fought for will pass away. If we don't have people who believe the principles of freedom, we won't be a free nation. The only way you can be a free nation is if you have a citizenry that's educated well enough to understand what it takes to preserve freedom. It is so important that the next generation of young people be ready and prepared to fight for freedom. Good future leadership happens intentionally. And that's what Gen J is all about, to make sure that people understand the principles of freedom and will be willing to lead the country toward freedom in the years ahead. This idea of freedom is the most important thing that we have, and it's worth fighting for. I don't want to be someone who grows old watching the sunset of America and telling my son stories about it, what it used to be. Our country's future is at stake. If Christians cease to be involved, we'll lose the foundation that made America great. America is great because America is good. We need some young people who will stand up, who will believe in freedom, and really understand the God-given foundation this nation is built upon. Stand up for what is right. Don't give up. Every single person has a sphere of influence and God has put you into that place to make a difference. Hello, I'm Dean Brown, founder of Images at the Cross. Ladies and gentlemen, America has reached a boiling point. I would like to share with you some very disturbing facts and trends. Are you aware that the vocal minority is in the process of taking over the family spiritual foundation that this country was founded on? The Ten Commandments are being removed from our schools and public buildings. School prayers, Christian songs, and even the terminology Christmas holiday is no longer permissible. 
Their agenda is to strip the word God, as in God we trust, from our coins and paper currency. They are pushing for the removal of God, as in under God, from the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. We must speak up. This affects you and your family in every phase of your life. It is also troubling to see 100 million or one-third of the U.S. population classified as unchurched. 50% of first marriages ending in divorce. 37% of children growing up with only one parent. Unintended pregnancies have reached nearly 50%. In the last national election, only 9% of those who voted indicated they were concerned about spiritual matters. The moral values of the greatest country in the world are at an all-time low. This trend, one generation from now, or two generations from now, for our children and grandchildren is very frightening. You and I together can and must reverse these trends. The answer is a place where individuals can be exposed to hope, love, and spiritual values. When you think of monuments, you think of the Statue of Liberty in New York, New York City. The Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. Or perhaps the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri. My vision is a spiritual monument called Images at the Cross, reaching 20 stories high, twin elevators, which will take you to the 17th floor. Here on the 17th floor at the 100-foot horizontal section of the cross, the greatest story of all, the life of Christ on earth, will be told. It will be a monument and exposure that everyone will want to see and experience. Located high on a mountaintop in the central part of the United States, near Branson, Missouri. Within a day's drive for one-fourth of the U.S. population, eight million people will pass by this monument annually. If you're concerned, disgusted, and upset at the direction our country is going, then join us. Help us build the world's largest cross. Images at the Cross is a special way to honor Jesus Christ, who gave it all, his life and his love, so we can have eternal life. To build this nonprofit monument, we need your financial gift. Please go to BransonCross.com and find out more about Images at the Cross. Encourage your family, friends, and community of believers to rally around this Reverse the Trend Monument. What a wonderful way to add to your legacy by being a part of Images at the Cross. Please send your tax-free donation to Images at the Cross, Post Office Box 46, Rockaway Beach, Missouri, 65740, or you can contribute online at BransonCross.com. 100% of your contributions, small or large, go to make this vision a reality. Thank you very much for helping us make a difference. May God richly bless you for your financial gift to Images at the Cross, for caring and seeking to help others and leaving a better world and legacy to our children and grandchildren. Let's sing this song right here. You know this one? This is my desire to all. You got it.
Guys, that's my prayer. I don't know about yours. I just want to be completely His. That's my desire tonight. Sing it from the depths of your soul. This is my desire.
ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. Today is a very special day, and uh, is that okay? No. Uh, check one two three. Check one two three. Come over here and see what you can do, brother. I can't fix it. <laughs> Not my job. All right, folks, uh, we are live on the air with you. We had a little technical difficulty there. We had to straighten out. Brother Jaime is straightening that out, and I hope he got it done. I hope he has it done. And uh, see if we do. are we live? Okay, we're up and going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're not up on uh, Crusade Radio right now. I'm not sure why, but uh, uh, I'll find out here in a minute, hopefully. Uh, if I can, uh, why we're not uh, up on uh, Crusade Radio. Uh, I, I'm getting a busy B U S Y you have an open on 6 3. See if this is. Good morning. God bless you, and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. Well, good morning, uh, Pastor Drake. We were hoping that uh, Reverend Mahoney will call in and talk about the nativity scene there in Santa Monica. All right, well, he's... Don't forget, today is December 7th. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be talking about that here in just a few minutes. What can I do for you? Well, I thought maybe I'd sing uh, a Beautiful America. America is beautiful. All right, let's do that. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Bosworth from Woodstock, Georgia, singing on the Wiley Drake Show... America the Beautiful, we're going to be talking about America. We're going to talk about it from Pearl Harbor days. We're going to talk about it from the fact that we're celebrating today Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor has a special, special place in my heart, and I'll be talking about that later. But, Brother Bob, give us America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber ways of grace. Well, Brother Bob, thank you so much. God bless you for singing that for us. And I'm going to share now why Pearl Harbor is so important. I'm going to uh, stand so my cameraman can get a picture of my tie. I am wearing a tie today that if in all uh, due humility, I might say so myself, it is a beautiful tie. It is red, white, and blue. It is also a beautiful tie, not only aesthetically, uh, but for me personally, because on the bottom of this tie, it says Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, and up on that is a picture of the Hawaiian Islands, and in the middle of the Hawaiian Islands there is the Pearl Harbor Monument. That is a monument that is over, and you can even see on this tie that below that monument is indeed the outline of the USS Arizona. Uh, the Arizona has a very special place in my heart, in my family, and so forth. We'll talk about that in a moment. But for right now, I want to say thank you, Brother Bob. God bless you for being on with us, and we'll talk to you later. Well, that is a beautiful tie, and I know that uh, Hawaii has a special meeting for you. You met your wife, Barbara, there. How many years ago was that? Well, Bob, I'm going to take over from this point and give the full litany yes. of the connection between Pearl Harbor, Wiley Drake, and our whole family. So God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Brother Bob is right. Uh, 
let me give you a quick history of Wiley Drake. I'm going to hold up for you a piece of paper, a personal document, a personnel document, a document that is entitled uh, DD-214, and that is form uh, uh, dated back to November the 1st, 1955, Armed Forces of the United States report or transfer or discharge, and this is my official Navy document, Navy Papers, uh, DD-214, and it has on there uh, Drake Wiley Smead. That's me. Service number 3504863, and I didn't have to read that. I know that into my mind. It's in my mind. And it says my rate was MM3. That was machinist mate third class. For those of you who are not Navy folks, that's an E4. Uh, for those of you that know the ranking in the military. Well, uh, this uh, was uh, my DD-214. And it says at the beginning, uh, the uh, term of service year. I entered date of entry, the United States Navy, the 20th day of January, 1961, and I departed 1964, but I simply hold that up to you to say, I am a military man. I indeed uh, had a term of service from the 20th day of January, 1961, until the 19th day of January, 1967. And if you go there, you will find on that DD-214 that I served three years, 10 months, and one day. And that was my term of active military duty. Now, I say all of that to say is that my first duty station was Naval Station Pearl Harbor slash USS Arizona. Now, the Arizona is still in commission, ladies and gentlemen. The Arizona was the key uh, in the attack on Pearl Harbor that we celebrate today. We celebrate negatively in the sense that, uh, indeed, our enemy attacked us in Pearl Harbor uh, on December the 7th, and we know that day to be, as a former president would say, a day of infamy. I think many of us, especially in those days, younger, not so educated, did not even know what the word infamous meant, nor the word infamy. But our president said, December the 7th will go down in a day of empath <laughs> empathy. Now, that's when we were attacked in Pearl Harbor. We do not want to celebrate that attack, but we do want to celebrate the lives of those that were given there in Pearl Harbor. Now, I have a wily story for you, uh, but I'm going to go into my history before I give you that story. But it is a Pearl Harbor, USS Arizona, a verifiable story that you can go to Washington, D.C., to the Smithsonian and to the Naval Institute and verify my story if you would like. Now, I went in the Navy in January of 1961. I went to basic training in San Diego. Uh, the uh, went to boot camp in San Diego. And after boot camp, I went home back to Arkansas. And then from Arkansas, I went back to California and was assigned my naval papers to give me my first duty station, which was Nave Station, Naval Station, Pearl Harbor, slash USS Arizona. My duty was to go there to be in the military, to be a sailor. In those days, it was called F.A. was my title. That was a fireman apprentice aboard ship. Now... I was not aboard ship yet. I was aboard the naval station, Pearl Harbor. And every morning, my duty was not only to the naval station, Pearl Harbor, but to the USS Arizona. 
the ship out in the bay under water. Now, in those days, there was not this beautiful monument there. In those days, there was nothing more than a two-inch piece of pipe sticking up out of the water. Uh, let me see who this is. Good morning. God bless you and welcome. Yes, good morning. Uh, uh, hello? Yes. I'm, I'm supposed to appear with uh, Professor Eric on his show. Uh, I'm so, we're live on the air right now. Is that where you meant to call? I'm sorry? Who, are, who am I speaking with? Hadim, Hadim Miwad, yes. Yes, I'm with uh, Coptic Solidarity. Coptic Solidarity, very good. Did my producer encourage you to call in? Is that what that was about? That's correct, yes. Let me do this. Let me give you another number to call in on so we have a better connection. Can you take this number? Sure. 800 No, 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 no. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Call in on that number. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. All right, that's the Coptic Solidarity, folks. And I want to make sure we get a good line with him. And we'll do that here shortly. Uh, okay, I, I think that is probably on... Uh, Brother Bob was so anxious to sing, he didn't tell me who was going to be, be on. But that's okay. Bob did a good job. Thank you, Bob, for singing for us. And uh, let me see if... Good morning, my brother, and God bless you. Good morning, brother. Okay, now we've got a much better uh, connection now. And I'm looking at uh, some information that says... Uh, Halim M. Miwad, and the, ti the title is Coptic Solidarity Calls for a Protest on December 8 Against Morsi's Dictatorial Grab of Power. Tell us about that, my brother. All right. Well, first of all, Mr. Morsi was elected. You know, he did not have, you know, a popular mandate. You know, he was elected by a majority of 51%. Okay, the reason, you know, he came to power and the 51%, you know, voted for him, because he, you know, his rival came from the old regime. So, he, you know, uh, the voters, you know, were very, very reluctant to vote to either candidate. But nevertheless, you know, he got the 51%. Uh, I was, from the beginning, I was very skeptical about his ascension, you know, to the uh, presidency. Uh, Mr. Morsi is very well known, you know, to be, you know, a staunch member, you know, a, a hardcore member of the Muslim Brotherhood. And I knew from the beginning you know, what, what his election, you know, means. Yes. Now exactly, you know, what was expected is happening. Mr. Morsi is trying, you know, to convert Egypt, the oldest, the oldest civilization in in, uh, in in human history, into you know a seventh century uh, tribe, not a modern country. Uh, that was very obvious, very apparent from the Constitution that his constituent uh, assembly, the assembly that was uh, 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 formed to draft the Constitution, was dominated by the Islamists, either from the Muslim Brotherhood, the majority are, or from the Salafists, who are even, you know, more fanatical uh, uh, segments you know, of uh, of the uh, of the of the Islamic uh, uh, 
such as you know the the yeah, Qaeda and 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 Hamas you know and so on. Well, uh, you know I take that back. Hamas is part of the uh, of the. But you know anyway, they drafted a constitution. The the uh, the formation of the of that assembly, which has you know 100 members. The vast majority of them are from the Muslim Brotherhood, and the formation was authorized by the People Assembly, who has been ordered to disband by the Constitutional, the Supreme Constitutional Court, because you know, it, you know, its election, its the process of its, its election was found to be flawed and illegal. So now, you know, the, the power that formed that assembly is gone, but the assembly remains. They drafted a constitution that if it is ratified, it will convert, you know, Egypt into, uh, uh, you know, as I said, you know, a seven century, you know, tribal system. Yeah. All the articles that guarantee, you know, the uh, rights of minorities, rights of women, rights of, uh, you know, uh, other than, you know, non-Sunni uh, 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 Muslims that are in, 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 in the 1971 uh, Constitution are all gone. Well, my dear brother, we we have watched uh, over the years here at the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington D.C., as well as the First Southern Baptist Church here in Buena Park. We have watched over the years as Egypt has tried to come on board, if you would, uh, to modern day uh, democracy, to modern day righteousness for people, for women. And we've seen it deteriorate again and again and again and seen Egypt try to come back, try to get up. And we were hoping that with this last election that would happen. But obviously, with only 49 percent or only 51 percent of the vote, obviously it was a split, uh, barely winning. But now you're telling us that it's going back downhill taking away the rights of the people, taking away the rights of women, taking away basic human rights, and uh, that's all under this auspices of shifting Egypt now back uh, to the Muslim Brotherhood. Is that what you're saying? Exactly to the word. That's exactly what I'm saying, you know, Pastor. Yes. Well, we are very aware of that, and our audience is very aware of that. Ladies and gentlemen, I have on with me uh, Halim Miwad, uh, and he is uh, the Egyptian uh, Front for National Salvation and Coptic Solidarity, and they're calling for a demonstration in Washington, D.C. on Saturday, uh, December the 8th. And now that will be at, uh, I believe, 11 a.m., in front of the White House. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, sir. And so that will be 8 a.m. for us out here, ladies and gentlemen, on the West Coast. And, uh, uh, Halim, what I want to ask you to do, if you would, please, is to email me. Uh, your, are you going to be there at that meeting? Uh, yes, of course, I will be there, yes. yeah. the uh, demonstration. Yeah. Now, what I would like to do is we have a special show later in the day, but at 11 o'clock D.C. time, I would like to be able to call you on the phone and do another live broadcast from here in California, but by telephone with you there in Washington, D.C., at 11 o'clock in front of the White House. How about 12 o'clock instead? That will be even, that will be more proper. Right? 
Uh, okay, we can do that. We can. Uh, let me see. That would be. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, uh, we can do it at twelve o'clock. Now I'm going to give you uh, an email address. Yes, sir. For me, it's Wiley Wiley W I L E Y W I L E Y Wiley Wiley at a T T. That's A T T, like the phone company. Okay. Dot net. So it's Wiley Wiley at A T T dot net. Now, if you will call me, I mean, send me an email. Excuse me, and give me your cell phone number in that email at twelve noon Washington D.C. time. We will go live on the air, radio and television. And cover your demonstration there in front of the White House on Saturday, December the 8th. And we'll do it via your cell phone and let you be our correspondent for the Wiley Drake Show. I'm sorry I cannot be there. I would have been there, but I've got another previous uh, Christmas and and Jewish uh, lighting of the menorah and so forth here in California Uh, a little later in the day, so I cannot be there with you. Uh, But please know that as a Judeo-Christian minister of the gospel, a Judeo-Christian chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., our hearts will be with you. We will also be praying for you. The ambassador from Burundi, uh, again, cannot be with you. But uh, I'm hoping we'll be able to get him on the telephone line with us at that time. His name is Dr. Clyde Rivers. And I assure you, as the co-chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., he indeed is on board with us and will be praying with you and be supportive of you. Okay, that's perfect, Pastor. Your prayers, you know, are extremely, extremely important, you know, for us. And I would like, you know, to remind, you know, your audience that it's not just, you know, the Christian minority and the other minorities that are at stake, you know, in the in Egypt and the other uh, Middle Eastern uh, countries, but also our interest, the American interest and the Western uh, countries' interest. We have, you know, the American people. We have a huge stake uh, in in the events, you know, that is, you know, currently going on in uh, in Egypt. Well, my brother, uh, you're you're absolutely right, and we have a concern for that as well. Not only for you, i.e., our friends and our uh, co-patriots, but we have a special interest as a country ourselves. I was in Egypt three days before they brutally murdered Anwar Sadat. I had met with him, had had prayer with him, and was praying for his safety. And unfortunately, three and a half days later, they brutally shot him to death. Yeah, and so really tragic. So my, uh, my roots go back quite a ways there. We've worked very closely with the Coptic Uh, Christians here in California with demonstrations. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, tomorrow at 12 noon, Washington, D.C. time, we will have Halim Miwad uh, on the the television and radio show with us. We will not have a camera there in D.C. I'll be on camera in Santa Monica, California, but we will be doing a live radio television broadcast at this demonstration, the demonstration starts at 11, and then at 12, uh, we will be on the air covering this with our new correspondent, uh, Halim Miwad. I hope I'm pronouncing your name almost right. It's almost right. <laughs> it's almost right, Trevor. Thank you. <laughs> well, for an American with a heavy accent from the South, that's about as good as I'd get. <laughs> Well, God bless you, my brother. And your first name is pronounced Halim. Uh, 
That's correct. And the last correct. is Miwad? It's Miwad, yes. Miwad, all right. Well, my brother, email to WileyWiley at HET.net, your cell phone number, and we will put you on the air uh, tomorrow at 12 noon around the world on Ustream.tv, and you're welcome to tell anyone uh, to watch or listen in. They can go to Ustream, that's the letter U, Ustream.tv, put in the Wiley Drake Show, and that's where we're broadcasting right now. We're also broadcasting right now on an internet international uh, radio station broadcast on www.crusaderadio.com. Our audience is communicating with us already, uh, and our audience is committing to you their prayers, their support, and uh, we believe that this needs to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, this demonstration is asking for four things. An annulment of the Constitutional Declaration of November the 22nd. A cancellation of the referendum scheduled for December the 15th and declaring the subject Constitution draft. Number three, disbanding the Constituent Assembly and forming a new one which truly represents all segments of the Egyptian society. Number four, strongly demanding a constitution in total accord with all international agreements and conventions which guarantees women's rights, human rights, religious freedom to all citizens equally. And as the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., I say I agree, and my dear brother, uh, you can go to our Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. dot com, and you will see uh, that I am the chairman. You'll also see that Dr. Clyde Rivers is the co-chairman, and you'll find out uh, that we are indeed very, very supportive of Israel, and we're also very supportive of Egypt, and especially from the Coptic perspective, because our roots literally go back uh, to the Coptic roots there in Egypt, as does our Ten Commandments and so on and so forth. So, brother, what else would you share with our listening audience at this time? Uh, the only thing, you know, is in, to, you know, to, 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 you know, just to demonstrate, you know, the gravity of the situation, uh, Reverend, is we don't want, you know, another Iran in the area. I agree. Therefore, therefore, Israel will be squeezed between one Iran in the east and another Iran in the west. Absolutely. And that's why I said we are behind you. We are supportive of you for your benefit as an Egyptian, as a Coptic. But we are also in it because for us to do that is absolutely advantageous for those of us that consider ourselves to be true uh, men and women of righteous democracy here in America. And so we have much at stake in this, uh, as well as you folks do. Uh, we're not going to probably face death over it, but like some of you will, but we certainly do see uh, a great deal of damage to the United States of America if this these four... Uh, demands are not met. That's correct. That's correct. Well, That's correct. Absolutely correct. And again, you know, your prayers is 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 a lot, a lot. You know, uh, more than we we could ask for more. Uh, well, we we uh, certainly so we we already had prayer for you early this morning. We will have prayer for you again tomorrow, and we will continue to pray with you, and we will uh, call you at 12 noon if you'll send me that uh, uh, cell phone number. I will do that right away. I will do that right away. And thank you so much. God bless you, and God bless your audience. Now, before you leave, if there are others who would like to get information they, of course, know how to go to my website and my phone numbers, but how would they uh, tell them where to go to get more information in electronically uh, for you? 
for okay for me from me you mean from us well yeah from your organization uh from you know we do have you know a website it's it's coptic solidarity coptic uh, yeah coptic solidarity one word and it's you know dot org and dot net okay dot org and not dot net coptic solidarity dot org and dot net we will look that up later. Ladies and gentlemen, go there and look and listen tomorrow, 12 noon, to hear about this demonstration at the White House. Uh, brother, I hope you have better luck there than I did the last two times I was there. Uh, they put me in jail. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, okay. And I'm an American citizen. But anyway, we will be praying for you. And I will uh, have you on the air with me. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure and listen to the Wiley Drake Show, a special Coptic Solidarity program tomorrow at 12 noon D.C. time. We will have as our guest uh, Halim Miwad, and we'll be talking about it. We'll be live from the White House. And uh, for those of you here in California, that will be at 9 a.m., for those of you in Arizona and other states, it'll be 10 a.m. In Texas, in that part of the country, it'll be 11 a.m. And there in Washington, D.C., at our house, the White House, where Halim will be with friends. There are other Coptics, and we, I encourage my pastor friends, my Coptic friends, my Christian, Judeo-Christian friends, if you're in Washington, D.C., on the eighth day of this month, which is tomorrow, please go, please go uh, to the White House for that demonstration. Thank you, my brother, and have a great day. Thank you so much. God bless you. God, God bless you. God bless you, and I'll wait for that email. Okay, we'll do that right away. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we really go international here. Tomorrow, 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 sing it, little girl. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow is a big day, folks. Uh, tomorrow is the Coptic Solidarity demonstration in Washington, D.C. on the internationally famous... Wiley Drake Show, and we thank the Lord for that. And Halim Miwad, H-A-L-I-M, his last name is Me, M-E-A-W-A-D, Miwad. He will be there at the White House, and like I told him, I hope he don't have the same treatment I got. I went to jail. But anyway, we will be live on the Wiley Drake Show tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. A.M., 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And that's going to be on Saturday. For those of you who don't understand my accent, that's Saturday. All right? I, <laughs> well, we got sidetracked there all the way from Pearl Harbor to Egypt. But uh, that's okay. We're coming back to Pearl Harbor. I said before in a communique that I put out, Hawaii has a very special place in my heart. Now, <laughs> whoo, glory. If I get a little old and emotional here in a minute, you just got to put up with it, folks. I can't help it. <laughs> I can't help it. My brother used to say, boy, don't cry. Daddy will give you a worse whipping. <laughs> and Daddy would give me a whipping and my brother would say, boy, don't cry, don't cry. And I'd say, I can't have it. I can't have it. Well, if I cry today, I can't have it. <laughs> anyway, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. I grew up in a place called Magnolia, Arkansas, up in Nevada County. Not Columbia County, but Nevada County. That's where my grandfather, William Wiley Drake, uh, grew up and so forth. But anyway. Who do we have on the phone with us here? Let's see if we can let's see if we can join here. 
Good morning. God bless you, and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. You're live on the air. Would you like to talk now, or you can call back later? No, I would like to talk now. Hello, Pastor Wiley Drake. I want to give all of my condolences to the people out there that lost. Today is Pearl Harbor Day. Yes, ma'am. And for the people that lost their loved ones, I want to give them all of my sympathy. I wasn't... I wasn't around then, but I want to give them all of my sympathy. Well, thank you. Thank you, my dear sister in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Senora Blanca. Yes, may I sing a song? You certainly can, my sister. You're live. Go for it. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. Yes, my soul burns, burns within me. I feel Jesus in this place. And I tell you something to all of you out there that lost one. Well, my dear sister, thank you so much for those condolences. I did not lose any family there. Thank God. But uh, I did have the privilege several years after that time to serve at Pearl Harbor. And my, my first duty station was... Naval Station Pearl Harbor slash USS Arizona. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, but God bless you. Thank you for coming on with us and keep up the good work. I'm going to let you go now. God bless you and bye bye. God bless everyone out there. Bye bye, my dear sister. Okay, bye bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a lady by the name of uh, Josefina White. Josefina White also has a stage name. Her singer name is Senora Blanca, and she's not Blanca. She is Negro. <laughs> I've teased her over the years. I've introduced her as my friend, Mrs. Uh, White, who is not. <laughs> her last name is White, and uh, but anyway... Uh, just one of our inside little crazy jokes. Now, back to Pearl Harbor. I keep getting distracted from this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in 1961, I went into the United States Navy. And in 1961, that same year, later in the year, after I'd been to boot camp and after I went home, then I was stationed at the Naval Station Pearl Harbor. Now, I had heard my dad talk about Pearl Harbor, but I had no idea where it was at. Somebody asked me, where are you going for your first duty station out of boot camp? And I said, I don't have the slightest idea. I know it's in Pearl Harbor, but I have no idea where that's at. And they said, well, it's a long boat ride from Los Angeles <laughs> across the ocean. And long it was. We didn't go from Los Angeles, but we did go down to San Diego and got aboard what we as Navy people affectionately refer to as a troop ship. It is a big ship, not nearly as big as a carrier, but it is a big ship, and it carries a lot of bodies. It's a lot of the, it was ship that was used back during the war where we would uh, board all these troops, all these soldiers and sailors and Marines on a big ship and take them over to the battlefield. Now, they were still doing that, still using troop ships back when I came in the Navy. I don't know if they still do or not. I sort of doubt it because it's so much cheaper to fly them there and put them on an airplane. But anyway, I got on a troop ship and for the next three days threw up everything but my toenails. 
I mean, I threw up, I threw up, I threw up. I'd never been on a ship before. We didn't have ships in Arkansas. Oh, we had a little creeks and, and a river or two. But uh, I was now aboard a troop ship, sicker than a dog. I mean, sick, sick, sick. But guess what? There were several hundred other men, boys, <laughs> Marines, sailors, Army, etc., as sick as I was except for about three of them, and they laughed and laughed and laughed about how sick we were. Anyway, we got on the ship, and we went to Hawaii. And I found out on the way over there, they, they actually came around in those days. We didn't have Internet or anything, but they came around and gave us brochures, these glossy brochures on Honolulu, Hawaii, and uh, Waikiki Beach. And the big island of Hawaii and Maui and on and on. They gave us these brochures. And I thought, my goodness, we're going to what one of the brochures called paradise. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at that time, I had spent two of the best years of my life in the ninth grade. And then I left home riding bulls for a living and then became a sailor in 1961. Now, Needless to say, my educational level was somewhat lacking. <laughs> uh, I spent two years in the ninth grade because my teacher said, Wiley, you were such a good student in the ninth grade, we're going to let you stay around one more year. <laughs> you didn't learn anything, but we're going to try to teach you something uh, in the second year that you couldn't learn in the first year. And so I was in the ninth grade the second time, and about three-fourths of the way through, I said, that's it. I've got enough education. I'm going to be a Brahma bull rider. And the circus came to town with the rodeo, and the guy gave me a job uh, shoveling out chutes. And uh, I left town with the circus and with the rodeo. And I saw some guys up there getting on the back of a Brahma bull and rode that bull for eight seconds. And when he got out of there, he had $50 in his hand. And I thought, golly, eight seconds of work, I can make $50? Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was in 1960, so you can imagine how much money that would have been. Now, after riding bulls for a while and traveling around the country and acting a fool, I decided I would join the Navy. And so I joined the United States Navy. And now I'll pick up the story where I was aboard ship, sicker than a dog, Finally, I almost got to where I could drink a little water without throwing it up. And then on the next day after that, I was able to eat some scrambled eggs for breakfast and eat a little SOS. Now, for those of you who are in the military, you know what SOS is. That's S on a shingle. <laughs> Basically, it was gravy and meat, ground up beef or chip beef and uh, gravy. <laughs> And you had it over toast. That was SOS. And I was managed to keep some of that down. Good morning. God bless you. And welcome to the internationally infamous Wiley Drake Show live on television. If you'd like to talk, go ahead. If not, call back after 10 o'clock if it's private. No, this is public. I just wanted to call in to say thank you. This is uh, Hunter Jameson calling from the... Santa Monica nativity scene. Well, Hunter Jameson, thank you so much. I've been talking about you for several days. And by the way, Mr. Jameson, most of what I said was pretty good. Um, <laughs> oh, good. I, well, I guess there is a reason my ears were burning. Then. Okay. Now, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we've been talking about uh, this fiasco there in Santa Monica, where the city, after 59 years, said no to the permit for these dear folks who wanted the nativity scene. Hunter Jameson is involved with that. Hunter, tell us what your involvement has been and bring us up to date with a firsthand, not a secondhand Wiley version of the story. Tell us firsthanded. Well, I'm the chairman of the committee, the nonprofit uh, committee, which is made up of uh, 13 churches in Santa Monica, plus the Santa Monica Police Officers Association, which is the police officers union and together these 14 groups uh, provide the nativity scenes uh, that is each of the groups puts up one of the 14 scenes in a year when we can perform them and provide them all and 
And we just praise the Lord that that is going to happen this year. As you've told your listeners, we had problems in the last year with uh, atheists that uh, tried to corner the display space and just about did, relegating us in last year's display in Palisades Park to only three booths and putting up some uh, derogatory signs of their own, leaving much of the space they had won in a new lottery vacant. And then now let me let me stop you there just for a minute, so that our listening audience can come on board with us and know what's happening. Now, for all of these years, the city basically said we have only so many spaces, and there were what about fourteen or fifteen spaces? Well, there's basically there is two blocks, which is the simplest way to look at it. Okay, two city blocks available for the Christmas time December displays. Now, at that point, uh, you folks were putting in your nativity scene. The Jews had a menorah and and other religious organizations. And then these atheists came along. And as I understand it, the the booth spaces or the individual display areas, uh, that's sort of a lottery kind of thing? Is that what it is? Well, it is now because uh, it's a little bit, it's still not absolutely clear to me <laughs> the the sequence and the cause and effect of what happened. But in August of 2010, instead of just uh, assigning space uh, as people applied, because there had always been plenty of space up till that time, uh, the only displays had been the nativity scenes, which take um, much of a block, and the menorah, which is typically on the same block, then there's one other block available, and uh, there have been dissenting voices, uh, atheists, others who have put up a display on uh, different years, and typically that other block, but that used only a small part of it. And um, there was a move by uh, uh, an atheist to uh, sign up for more space for 2010. And he signed up for what would be 14, 14, enough space to erect 14 booths of his own. That's basically a full block. Yeah. In 2010, uh, then in August, the city announced it would uh, start to divide up the two blocks into a number of spaces in case there was uh, too much, uh, too many. There were too many applicants for the blocks and space available. They would limit these spaces. There were 21 spaces, and then the maximum application could be for nine spaces. And uh, it turned out, though, that a lot of this was was really not necessary because when the display time in December came around in 2010, the atheists, again, only put up one block, uh, one one booth. They put up one booth in 2009. They put up one booth in 2010. But the city decided... It was going to put this system of dividing up the spaces into effect for 2011. Mm -hmm. Oh, in 2011, they took applications, uh, a number of uh, atheists banded together and uh, applied for the maximum number of spaces, which in a sense blindsided us. We applied for ours, but there were a number of them, uh, many, several of them, there were, I believe, Oh, I think it was about 13 of them that applied for the maximum number of spaces, and they uh, therefore a lottery was held because there were far many more applicants than there were spaces available. And uh, we wound up with just enough space for three of our usual 14 booths. As I say, the, the atheists wound up with actually one and three quarters of the block, mm. uh, blocks available. They didn't put anything on one of the blocks, and they put some generally low-budget um, lawn sign-type displays with a few other uh, more in- more elaborate displays, a booth or two and a, and a banner, uh, often insulting, generally insulting to uh, Christian and religious beliefs. But right. uh, there was a controversy that ensued over this. The whole procedure was, was controversial, that the nativity scenes were limited to three booths uh, after 58 years was controversial. And Rather than try to deal with the controversy and to find a way to accommodate uh, 
the scenes and 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 the centers the city council decided it would just uh, try to take the easy way out that's my interpretation what they thought would be the easy way out and just stop all displays at christmas time and then uh, all displays period uh we couldn't display but neither could the atheists however the atheists had made it clear that their main goal was not so much putting up the display, it was stopping us from being in the park. They did not want a nativity scene display in the park. They were uh, interested in getting rid of us more than uh, putting up some message of their own. They, as I pointed out, when they won one and three quarters of the blocks, of the two blocks, they only used three quarters of a block. They left the other block completely empty. When we asked if we could use it for our nativity scenes, they said no, it was being used as a park. Uh, that was against the rules, by the way. That's the, you're, not, you're supposed to use the spaces you get, but the only penalty would apply one year later. And the penalty that would apply one year later would be that if you uh, won space one year later, you wouldn't get any, you wouldn't be awarded uh, space equivalent to what you did not use. So. Uh, it, it was a toothless, a toothless penalty, and uh, the atheists made use of it. And uh, as they say, in the last year's situation, 2011, we were down to three, um, three booths, and uh, the atheists had three quarters of a block they used uh, to a certain degree. As they say, many of their displays were rather uh, low, um, did not really amount to much. Some, some did. And then they left one block empty. Again, the controversy ensued. And then during this past year, during 2012, there have been great discussions. And the city uh, attorney and the city council took the easy way out, trying to stop the controversy, trying to stop, as one councilman called it, the battle for the park, which they thought was unseemly. And although the city council admitted and the uh, city attorney said there was no constitutional problem with having excuse me, having the displays there. Uh, they had a problem in trying to accommodate everybody, but they said that to, to be fair, they were going to just stop everybody from displaying. They really, their goal was to stop any, to try to stop controversy. So they kicked us out of the park after 59 years. And uh, we're praising the Lord that through uh, the good offices of some uh, generous private uh, property owners, the Watt companies, in the eastern part of Santa Monica, we have been able to erect all 14 booths this year on private property. And the menorah, which was put up by Chabad of Santa Monica for a quarter century at the same uh, in Palisades Park there, they say we typically share the same block. I thought a very fine interfaith uh, example, the menorah uh, and part of the block and the nativity scenes typically in the other part of the block. The menorah also will be displayed at this new location on private property this year. So we're very thankful for that. And uh, and there's a great deal of attention that's been devoted to, uh, to the scenes and also a number of other Christian groups have, and you're you're well aware of this. Uh, I'm sure you have, as you have probably told your listeners on numerous occasions. One of them designing to have a um, an all comers kind of uh, living nativity scene on Saturday in the park and in Palisades Park, and also another friend of the committee organizing Christmas displays every evening, uh, Christmas celebrations. Uh, these aren't permanent displays, but these are celebrations. These are songs. These are um, other various activities, maybe some skits. They'll be done nightly in Palisades Park through the 23rd. So although our nativity scenes displays, the booths and the mannequins are not at Palisades Park, there are living activities going on there saluting Christmas, and we are so thankful that that, that is going on. There, there had not been really that at the park in recent years. Well, what I've said about this, and I'll let you uh, share further, but what I've said is what the devil, that is the atheist, meant for evil, God has turned to good. Now, if I understand you right, the evening presentations will be through the 23rd. Is that right? That is correct, yes. 
most uh, most evenings through the twenty third. Yes. Now, do, is there a time on those, or do we need to know? Or generally speaking, it's seven o'clock. I'm in the vicinity of seven o'clock. I think some earlier evenings it may start earlier, but I think seven to nine in the vicinity uh, in Palisades Park is the southern end of the park, which. For those who might know Santa Monica, it's the end near the Santa Monica Pier, which is just a- across the street from the southern end of Palisades Park. Now, that's a little further south than Santa Monica Boulevard, right? Uh, yes, that is correct. So the living nativity scene uh, that is set up will be uh, there at the Palisade Park there near uh, Ocean Avenue and uh, uh Santa Monica Boulevard, but the yes, the one on Saturday is which is basically the site that we did have our own displays, the booths and the mannequins. That is basically the site where, although it's varied over the years, in recent years, that's basically the site where our uh, booth nativity scenes were. Yes. Yeah. Now, if folks, we of course have put out the corner of Santa Monica and Ocean Avenue, uh, and then of course. Uh, before we move away from that, though, the scenes that you have up now are at that 2716 Ocean Park Boulevard, uh, 90405. Is that correct? That's correct. That's eastern. That's the eastern uh, part of Santa Monica, which is not a huge geographically. The first street, for example, there is no first, but if there were, it would be right on the waterfront. So 28th is basically, uh, you know, 28 blocks uh, um inland from the uh, from the ocean. Okay, so if the folks want to come, obviously we've been inviting folks to come to the corner of Santa Monica and Ocean Avenue uh, tomorrow at 1. We're going to be doing a live broadcast from there on television and on radio. We did one yesterday, uh, and it's up on the Internet already uh, from the park there where we'll be tomorrow at 1. And fact of the matter is, you're talking about multi-ethnic, multi-religious. Tomorrow morning, we're doing, uh, at 9 a.m., we're doing a Coptic Solidarity uh, live broadcast from that same park. And it'll be live from Washington, D.C., the White House, and the live nativity scene area there at Santa Monica Boulevard uh, and uh, Ocean Avenue. That will be in the morning at 9, and then at 1 o'clock in the afternoon is when the live walk-on nativity scene uh, will be there. And if any of you would like to be cast, the people that are casting this, and i got to use that term because my kids that are in movies, uh, <laughs> but anyway, they're they're casting people for that live scene, and the way to find out about that is to go to Survivors, survivors Survivors.LA, and go on their web, and you can be cast in this live nativity scene. And then I would encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, as we would say here in Buena Park, shopping by here in town, we would encourage you to go uh, to uh, Santa Monica, up especially through the 23rd uh, there at Santa Monica, uh, down uh, uh, near the pier. Uh, now, that uh, where do we tell the people to go for that in the evening? Well, that's, that's, you, you've done it. It's, uh, it's uh, in the southern part of the park. If you've mentioned where the living nativity will be on Saturday, if people uh, would, would walk on down farther south, just about, oh, two, three blocks uh, farther south towards the pier, which they can easily see from Santa Monica Boulevard, then they'll be in the place. It's a kind of, a, there are um, a memorial cannon that are up there, uh, marking the that are in that particular vicinity, but there's a kind of wide open uh, space available for people there, and that's where it will be, just as uh, as towards that end at the, at the end of the park. Now, is that where that big, huge cannon is? Yes, I believe that. That's yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, we we have pictures of me at that cannon yesterday, saying, "Folks, we're in a battle here." <laughs> oh man. And, yes. so, and so we already have the picture of the cannon there. So, ladies and gentlemen, that will be through the 23rd in the evening, roughly at 7 p.m. 
and there of course be vendors, be other businesses along the way, places to buy food and uh, places to enjoy yourself, places to shop and so forth. We're going to go over here a little bit, Mr. Producer, so just keep the cameras rolling and keep the audio rolling. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have on with me uh, one of the organizers. Give them your name one more time, please. Uh, Hunter Jameson. Hunter Jameson. Uh, the there certainly are many, many others who have made this possible, of course. I, I happen to be the chairman of the prof nonprofit committee, but uh, we've had many, many others, and it's been so encouraging to receive notes and, uh, and uh, sometimes telephone calls from uh, people, emails especially from people who have emailed our site and have uh, said, we want to help, we support you, letters to the paper and many people who spoke for us when this matter was before the city council earlier in the year. So I'd just like to say thank you to uh, the many people who have uh, cited and with us and stood up for this, uh, this voice of uh, of love and, uh, and faith. Well, and we also talked about uh, survivors.la. Uh, uh, Brother Jameson, would you please give our listening audience uh, the website for your organization so they can go to that website and help you not only support you and pray with you and pray for you, but even make a donation uh, because it costs a lot of money to keep this thing going and keep it up. So tell them where they can go to make a donation. Yes, that is uh, www. And then our name is all one word, Santa Monica Nativity Scenes, and that's plural, Santa Monica Nativity Scenes dot org. And there is a donation button there if people are able to donate. I should say we, we are waging uh, legal action here. We've taken sued the city for infringing our constitutional rights of free speech and free exercise of religion. Uh, we have a wonderful lawyer, uh, William J. Becker, Jr., who, is who has volunteered his time. We have other great organizations, Liberty Council and the Pacific Justice Institute, who have borne court costs. So our court uh, our costs have been take have been borne. We're we we're no, not soliciting for that, but for the displays of uh, transporting the scenes, putting them up, taking them down, storing them, uh, the insurance, the liability insurance, publicity, and mailing. Those are continuing ongoing costs that uh, that just recur from year to year. God is faithful, and uh, of course, this is privately supported. No government money going. Amen. You can believe. But businesses, churches, and individuals have done uh, have just brought in what we need, and we're very thankful for people who are able, in a position, to donate to us. Well, we certainly appreciate that, and uh, uh, want to say to you as well as any other of the organizers, thank you for making our Christmas uh, much, much better uh, for this upcoming year. And we also want you to know that we're going to be. Uh, uh, there a lot. We will be there uh, with our cameraman. We'll be there producing live shows. As I said, we'll have a live show tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., then at 1 for the nativity scene, and all times in, in between. And if you would like to come and be on the Wiley Drake Show, you'd like to sing, dance, pray, preach, whatever you'd like to do, we'd love to have you there. We're going to be doing a whole weekend in Santa Monica, and I thought it was very, very interesting that survivors and others have pointed out that the city of Santa Monica was named after a lady named Monica, and she was a lady who was forced to marry a pagan, forced to have a son that ended up being a pagan, and uh, did not give up. Prayed for her husband, and he became a Christian. Prayed for her prodigal son, and he came home. And for all of us who are religious in any fashion, we know that indeed her son became a very famous man in all of Christendom, no matter what your denomination, and that is the St. Augustine Confessions, St. Augustine, and because of a, a dear, sweet 
lady named Monica who didn't give up on a pagan husband, didn't give up on a pagan son. Her husband was one to Jesus. Her son was one to Jesus. And we now have the history of that as well as the history of a great, great city here on the West Coast, here in California. And the name of that city is Santa Monica. And we praise God for that. And thank you, my brother Hunter, for being on with us. And we'll look forward to getting you on camera later. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Hunter Jameson, the chairman of the committee. And uh, we're at the end of our time. We have to go. I'll finish the Wiley Drake Pearl Harbor story a little later. You don't want to miss tonight's show because I'm going to tell you a story that you can verify in Washington, D.C., in the Navy Museum. I'm going to share with you about how a member of my family caught, literally caught, from the exploding Arizona when she was bombed, when that bugle that called the men to attention, that bugle fell from the sky at the feet of one of my family members, and he picked it up and held on to that bugle for many, many years. He has since died and gone to heaven. He was a Pearl Harbor survivor. He was aboard ship, another ship, getting back to his ship when it happened. And he had that bugle that says on it, USS Arizona. And I'll tell you how you can find that bugle in Washington, D.C. But you got to come back tonight to find out how to do that. God bless you and have a great, great day. Remember, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. That's our theme, folks. Bye-bye. Good day and God bless you. Correct.